Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today we're going to be evaluating an integral I got off of the channel, uh, Mathalysis World. I'll link to his video and his channel in the description. Um, I'm going to be using Feynman integration to solve it. Uh, he is the gamma function, so I can kind of justify copying his integral here. Um, it's labeled as a classic integral. Um, I've never seen this integral before, um, so no. Y is considered classic, but anyway, here we go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make the substitution U is equal to 1 over X, um, which implies that dx is equal to negative 1 over U squared. Um, so that's going to change our integral to... The integral from, let's see, 1 over 0 is infinity, 1 over infinity is 0, and we're still going to have 1 minus, we'll get 1 over x um, times the sine, sorry, 1 over u, sine u, and our dx is negative, which I will use to the bounds of integration. U squared. Now, as is typical with Feynman integration, we're going to create a function in terms of a new parameter. Always on this channel, that's t. f of t is going to be integral from zero to infinity of one minus one over u sine t u over u squared. Sorry, not. Minus 1 over u sine t over u squared du from 0. Using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, get f prime of t is equal to 0 to infinity, partial derivative with respect to t of our integrand, so that plus 1 minus cosine du over squared. Pause the video if you want to check that. Let me check it myself. Derivative of t is 1 over a u, which will be that u. All right. Um, oh, I forgot. Up here, you have to state that f of 1 i. Integral of Evaluate this at point t is equal to 1. Get back our original integral. Also, that f of 0, 0 minus 0 over anything is 0. In integral of 0 is 0. Right. Also, we'll note that uh, prime of 0 also from 1, 1 minus 1. So now let's take another derivative with respect to t using the Leibniz rule. f double prime rule from zero to infinity sine t u over u. This is equal to pi over two for all t greater than zero shown that many 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 times on this channel so hopefully you guys just all believe me okay so if we have f double prime is equal to pi over two it's our f prime rewrite it just taking the antiderivative of pi over two with respect to t because i hope you would agree that if our f double prime of t is equal to pi over two then our f prime is going to be antiderivative of pi over 2 with respect to t, which is just pi t over 2 plus c. All right, that's our f prime. f prime of. All right, but we know f prime at 0 is equal to 0. That means that 0 is equal to c. We don't need the c. 
the power f prime of um and now uh let's rewrite our f of t by taking the antiderivative of f prime of t we don't actually need this anymore either i don't know why i'm using this side of the board when this side is much better all right so that means our f of t is now just equal to the antiderivative of pi t over 2. Um, so that is pi t squared over 4 plus c. We know that f of 0 is 0. That means that um, 0 is equal to 0 plus c. c is equal to 0. There's our f of t. We know that i our original integral equal to f evaluated at one. So this is going to be this thing evaluated at one, and that's pi over four. Same answer he got. He got it a different way. I like this way better. Of course, since this is a channel on Feynman integration, I always like Feynman integration better than everything else. So uh, there you go. Hope you